In a city where things were normal, people suddenly went blind. In this apocalyptic world, Doctor and his wife try to survive in an old asylum and meet other blind people. Just where there was no hope, a surprising twist gave sight back to one person. Keep watching to know how they survive. At the beginning of the movie, on what seemed like a normal day in the city, a traffic jam caused a stir among drivers. A businessman suddenly went blind and stopped his car in the street. People came to help, and one man offered to drive him home. But when they arrived, the man stole the car and drove off. He returned quickly, pretending to be someone else, and offered to help the businessman get to his apartment. The businessman, now cautious, kicked the man out once he was safely home. A few hours later, the businessman's wife took him to see a doctor who saw no damage to his eyes. The doctor thought the problem might be neurological and suggested tests at the hospital. The doctor had never seen such a case before. After the couple left, the doctor saw other patients, including a child, a woman with sunglasses, and a man with an eye patch. Later that evening, the woman with sunglasses went to a hotel, asked the bartender for a drink, and then went upstairs with her client. Their meeting went well, but it ended badly when she suddenly started panicking because her vision went white too. The doctor went home and enjoyed a nice dinner with his wife. The next morning, more people arrived at the asylum. The businessman finally met his wife again, but the child was sad because his mother was still missing. The doctor and his wife asked the guards for help with the thief's injured leg, but the guards only pointed their weapons at them and sent them back to their room. Later, they got their first box of food. It was very poor, like school or prison food, and there wasn't enough of it. The doctor's wife tried to use the emergency phone to ask for more food and a first aid kit, but only an answering machine answered her calls. Weeks passed, and more blind people were sent to the asylum each day. The doctor's wife tied a cloth between the wards to help people find their way, but it became hard to keep order. Everyone was blind and soon ignored cleanliness, wandering around without clothes and using the hallways as toilets. The businessman tried to stay positive by talking with his wife about their younger days, but she found it too painful to think about happier times. One afternoon, the doctor's wife heard a noise and found out that the man with the eye patch had a radio. She persuaded him to share the news with everyone, as they were all eager to know what was happening outside. The eye patch man explained that there weren't many radio stations left, but he gathered that there were many cases of blindness at first. The government had sent the blind people to the asylum and told everyone else to stay home. People everywhere watched as experts from around the world held meetings where they used many words but didn't explain what was happening. Soon, even the experts caught the illness and it began spreading to other countries. People grew tired of waiting at home and tried to go outside. But soldiers were watching and arrested anyone who broke the rules. The city fell into chaos with car crashes and falling planes. Citizens became scared and decided to stay home, turning the city into a ghost town. The government, now blind, did nothing to help. Days later, a large group of infected people arrived at the asylum. The soldiers, now very harsh, shot a man for accidentally stepping out of line. The gunshot caused panic and everyone rushed inside, pushing and breaking doors. The soldiers did not pick up the man's body. The doctor's wife asked for a shovel to bury him, but the soldiers threw it into the yard without moving from their towers. Pretending to be blind, the doctor's wife asked for directions and the soldiers teased her until she found the shovel and gave them the finger. The doctor tried to talk with other ward leaders about burying the dead and the unfair distribution of food. The bartender, tired of the doctor's leadership, declared himself the king of Ward 3, ordering his ward to eat as much as they wanted for helping with the bodies. Later, the doctor's wife visited the thief, who had a fever from a severe leg infection. She tried to be supportive, but the thief threatened her, saying he knew she wasn't blind. This made the wife rush back to her husband and have a breakdown. The thief couldn't bear the pain any longer and decided not to wait for things to get better. He dragged himself outside and let the soldiers shoot him. The doctor's wife felt guilty and thought about telling everyone the truth. The doctor told her not to. He also worried that their relationship felt more like a nurse and patient than a marriage. Later, the bartender found the asylum's office with help from the accountant. A blind man who had been blind from birth knew how to handle it better. The bartender used the PA system to announce that he was now in charge of the asylum and made a new rule. People had to pay for their food. 
This rule upset everyone, and a fight broke out near the food storage. The doctor's wife started collecting valuables from people in her ward, including wedding rings and anything they had in their pocket, but she kept a pair of scissors she found. Kid had nothing to give, but the sunglasses woman promised to support him. In the food storage, the accountant used his sense of touch to check the quality of the items brought. Despite the value of the jewelry, the bartender only gave a few boxes of food to each ward and threatened anyone who complained. People had to share small meals, and the doctor stayed to himself, feeling like a failure and not in the mood to be kind. Sunglasses woman went to comfort him, saying there was nothing he could do against a gun. They ended up being intimate on the floor. The doctor's wife found them while they were finishing but didn't make a scene. Instead, she told the sunglasses woman that she could see and asked her to keep it a secret, letting her own guilt weigh on her. A week later, everyone in the asylum had run out of things to trade. The bartender announced that they would now accept service from women in exchange for food. If anyone wanted to volunteer, they could. The accountant took the women to the food storage room, where they had a terrible night. The men were harsh and violent, and one of them even killed one of the women. In the morning, the doctor's wife asked for someone else to get the food because the woman had returned with the dead body, ready to clean her up and give her a proper farewell. The doctor's wife told him that one woman had been dead, and they used her anyway, leaving him speechless. The doctor's wife, feeling angry, took the scissors to the storage room, where everyone was busy with the women from Ward 2. She quickly killed the bartender with the scissors and took the girls with her. The accountant, who had grabbed a gun, tried to shoot her but missed. On her way out, the doctor's wife made a threat. If they didn't release the food, more men would die. She now wanted to collect the food herself. The doctor feared this would lead to a fight. Ward 3 blocked the area and still wouldn't give up the food. Ward 1 prepared to fight back, but before they could act, one of the women sought revenge. She had kept a lighter hidden and used it to start a fire in Ward 3. Fire spread quickly, killing many men. Amid the chaos, the doctor's wife led everyone out of the building. Surprisingly, no one was shot because the guards were gone and the doors were unlocked. They were finally free. Doctor, his wife, did, the eye patch man, the sunglasses woman, the businessman, and his wife stuck together and went downtown, finding the city in ruins. The city was a wasteland, where people fought over food and animals fed on bodies. The doctor and his wife left the group hidden in a bar while they went to a nearby market and food. The market was chaotic, people grabbing whatever they could. The doctor's wife, who could see, found stairs leading to a storage room. After filling some bags with supplies, she tried to leave, but was attacked by people who heard the noise and tried to rob her. Luckily, the doctor heard the commotion and rushed to help. He pushed the crowd away and shielded his wife as they escaped the building. Once they were safe, the wife took a moment to calm down, while the doctor went back to get the clothes he had dropped. A friendly dog came over and started to play with her. Suddenly, it began to rain. The wife took the dog inside a nearby church to stay dry while she waited for the doctor. The church was crowded and the statues had their eyes covered, but a priest kept talking about religion. Outside, people collected rainwater and cleaned themselves since they hadn't had clean water in a long time. The doctor returned with the clothes and joined his wife. They all went back to the bar, where they decided to stay for the night. The next morning, they carefully walked through the city to the doctor's house, where they planned to stay together. They created a routine with the wife's help. They cleaned the apartment, shared the doctor's clothes, and only went out for food. They collected rainwater and washed when it rained. Eyepatch Man felt like they had become a family and wanted to stay with them forever. Weeks later, everyone was getting ready for breakfast when the businessman suddenly yelled out that he could see again. Blindness had disappeared just as suddenly as it had come. Everyone celebrated, realizing that their bodies could fight the disease and that there was hope, the future.